Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Amona Project. We here at the Amona Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, inspiration, education, advice, guidance, and I want to continue on the stories of Harav Isser Zalman Meltzer. This is the guy who was on such an amazing high level that he could look at a pot and can tell whether it was toiled, whether it was uh, dipped, uh, immersed in a mikvah prior to its first use. It's the level he was at. Remember, the Briskarov wasn't impressed. Why? Because he was such a great man. I'm going to give you a, uh, a little hint as to the greatness of uh, Rav uh, Isser Zalman Meltzer. I said in a previous video that his son-in-law was Harav Arn Cutler, and his grandson was Rav Schneer Cutler. These guys became um, heads of yeshivas, very, very great men. But at this point, they had just miraculously these two young men had miraculously been uh, saved from the clutches of the Nazis. They left Europe and they were in Israel for a very brief time. And then they were going to Israel because the grandson, uh, Schnur Kutler, was engaged. He was a chosen. And they were off, and as soon as he got to America, he'd be, he'd be married. So Rav um, Isser Zalman Meltzer was accompanying his son and grandson down the steps. Um, and there was a taxi waiting to take them to the airport, to take them to the States. But he didn't walk them all the way to the taxi. He stayed on the steps. And he bid them a very tearful, uh, heartfelt goodbye. But he didn't leave the steps. He didn't walk them to the taxi. Now, the students of Harav Meltzer were surprised. They were kind of taken aback. He says, what, you, you can't walk another 10, 20 steps of the sidewalk? You got to... You say about the steps, but they knew that the Rebbe, Isra Zalman, was a great man. And in even the slightest thing, it, it had to have some meaning. And why was he doing this? Everything they observed, it was by design. So, what was the reason? Finally, one of these uh, yeshiva bocherim, one of the, the, the yeshiva boys, got up the courage to ask the Rebbe. He says, Meltzer, like, how didn't you walk? Why come you didn't walk him to the taxi? And um, Harav Isser Zalman uh, explained the rationale behind his actions. He gave a response that uh, brought tears to my eyes, caused me to shudder. He says, Not all of my grandson's friends were fortunate to be in the situation he is today. A survivor of the Holocaust has his parents. Most of them were slaughtered after being persecuted with, with, in a heinous and, and, and brutal manner. They were sacrificed al Kiddush Hashem, the sanctification in the name of God. How can I walk my son and grandson down to the street and publicly kiss them goodbye? knowing that there are others who did not attain such a moment. How many mothers and fathers lost their children? How can I not be sensitive to their emotions? The story reminds me of a, of a story that I heard from a friend of mine, Mordechai, who was a yeshiva student in Israel. And when he was a, a yeshiva student, uh, he had a friend. And his friend who lived in Jerusalem, his parents were there, and what he would do, he would make a habit every Friday afternoon to go to a certain florist and he would buy flowers for his mother. One day, and the florist was used to this kid. One day, he goes there and just at the last minute he turns away. And he, about five minutes or so go by, the boy comes back and just as he's about to get to the florist, he goes and he sits on a bench. And he does this four or five times. And the florist is getting, what is this, some sort of weird game? Finally, he bought some flowers. My friend Mordechai knew that this young man, when he was about to uh, buy flowers, he saw a friend, a, a fellow student, whose mother had passed away recently. And he says, how can I buy flowers? When this boy's mother just died a few months ago, he, I will cause him pain, and he would turn away. He would go and he says, this young boy's, he, he's, his parents are in New York. He hasn't seen his mother for a long time. I'm able to buy my mother flowers. How can I buy flowers when this boy is, is missing his parents?
mind so much. That kind of sensitivity helps explain um, the, the character that flowed from one generation to the next. And you'll see in another story, uh, my next story, how this greatness passed from, uh, from Rabbi uh, Isser Zalman uh, Meltzer to a son, Rabbi Aaron Cutler, to the grandson, Jner Cutler. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. I hope you're finding them inspiring. And until next time, on behalf of the Immortal Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.